All right, my name is Oliver Kranz. I'm the uh, CIO of uh, Microcred. Some of you may have heard of this company before, um, probably many not. Uh, we are a micro lender, so you're going to wonder why I'm in this category. Um, we're in the category because every one of our clients gets a bank account. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the network and the technology that we're putting uh, behind this as to um, how we open bank accounts and, and, and the, um, you know, the effect it has on, on the people. So, oh, here we go. Green. All right, so the network. Network's called Baobab, a good African name. Um, it's basically our, um, our network that we're setting up to sustain people like uh, this merchant here. Um, Musat is a merchant sitting in Dakar. Um, he sells used shoes, interesting thing. More interesting is he buys these from a wholesaler, so he needs cash flow to actually go buy things like this. And, uh, and he also has um, a couple of other businesses that he, he runs on the side. So he deals in cash, uh, obviously, and, and he also needs to deposit cash and pay for things. So, so getting access to, to the formal a financial system when he pays a re a wholesalers is something that that he requires. Oops, sorry. So we've got two types of uh, branches that we're taking out there. So, so like I said, when we give people a loan, they automatically get a, a bank account on our core banking system, and this allows them to go into our branches. Um, and we have uh, branches uh, over Africa, so we operate in eight countries um, across Africa in, and in China. And uh, branches, we've opened up branch networks now in, in Senegal and Madagascar um, and uh, just, doing, just starting up in Ivory Coast. So we're a, a bit uh, French-centric there. So this branch you see here is, is our sort of primary branch, uh, you know, very boldly branded. Pink always being a good, a good color there. Um, and the, but the more common branches are obviously these, and uh, this is kind of a, a small general purpose agent. This is actually quite a big branch for an agent. Um, what you see, that little window, is often what you see as the only agent. And these agents are ones that do orange money, um, money express, etc., cetera, um, very near to the, to the clients. And these are the agents that we're going to um, also allow to open up a bank account. So when you look at um, the agent network, um, we started in, in, in Senegal and, and then moved to Madagascar. So Right now, about 600 agents. Uh, we still need to push a lot more into the rural areas. Uh, challenges in Africa, for those of you who, who travel into these countries, will know um, getting internet access uh, or data access is always uh, one of the key things, and even electricity is quite a challenge. Um, so we have a high density around, around the Dakar area, which is also where my office is and uh, where we have our technology hub uh, for the organization is, is in Dakar. So. If we look at um, how we set this up, the slides are in French, all in French. Um, we are a French company uh, based out of Paris, but we only operate in Africa and in China. Um, but uh, we started in Francophone, so that's why we're, uh, uh, we've got French slides here. So those of you who can read French, um, do so. You'll, 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 you'll see it makes sense. Um, so the key thing about the, the process we're looking at here is we're going to give uh, tablets to the agents, um, they obviously have to have internet access. Uh, internet access would be 2G, uh, 3G, uh, 4G we can kind of uh, ignore. Um, satellite, we're putting up satellites for agents as well, so, so sort of cheap satellite solutions that give them internet access. Without internet, there's, uh, there's nothing happening. So they get essentially a tablet with which they will now um, sign up the customer. So we're, we're, we're uh, a micro lender with a microfinance uh, license, so we do a full KYC on these bank accounts. So we get uh, the person to take um, essentially a photo here, and we take uh, pictures of their ID cards, so they're kind of formatted for the various countries uh, that we do this in, so that we can just do an OCR over it and just read the data um, off, off the cards. Um, also your proof of residence, um, where, where that is required. Then we sign up biometrically. So the entire um, architecture of, of microcredit is based around us running a biometric server, um, signing up people with, with biometrics, and when they come and withdraw money or pay in money, they just use biometrics. So, so this is essentially the process then. So there's going to be a, a biometric reader that you see on the right there. It's attached via a USB cable to the tablet. 
uh, and the customer is essentially signed up here, um, entering his fingerprint three times, and then um, he's validated, and then he signs his contract. So he digitally signs his contract with a fingerprint again. So essentially you're um, doing a digital signature with biometrics here. And then, and then, you know, then the account gets set up. So in the back end, we run a core banking system, T24. Many of you will know it, very, very old, very solid. Um, and we have an innovation layer above it, which does all the fancy things that you're seeing here. So essentially the whole biometric and the, and the mobile apps run through the innovation layer. So in the background now, automatically, we, we create the account. And uh, the customer is now uh, registered and is able to use this account um, to deposit money, do savings, uh, withdraw money. Um, by the end of the year, cross-border within, within the CFA region will be possible as well. And the way that, why, why do we have bank accounts for all of our customers is quite simple. We, we still deal primarily in cash, so cash is still king, no doubt, so we pay out in cash. Um, customers can come to agents and pay in cash into their accounts, but when we draw the, the, the premiums back again, we always draw them out of a bank account. So the bank account, the digital bank account, always has to be financed here. So when FinTech meets a need, it changes lives. I think we, we are um, in a space where we manually lend money. Um, we are a, a fairly large organization. We have about 3,000 people. And half of that are loan officers who actually go out and uh, talk to the merchants, uh, assess the risk, and then um, bring that back to the, to the branches to decide whether we can lend them or not. And this is a segment that banks really, really struggle with. Um, uh, we struggle a little bit with it as well, but uh, we've managed to make a success of it. And uh, I'll leave you with a couple of stats um, of microcred and uh, happy to answer questions afterwards. Thank you. You quickly said a couple of words about assessing risk, yes. right? Yeah. Which is kind of a big deal because my question would be how rich is the data that you are diving into to basically assess the credit worthiness of your customers? Where do you take the data from? <laughs> we gather it. So the point is, is that the, the segment we're dealing in, most of those clients, I mean, we, we do SME lending. So SMEs will have bank accounts, uh, some of them, so we can where it's possible access um, the bank accounts, or the, bank, the, the data if, if there are bank accounts around. But the majority of our clients are actually not banked. They're not formally banked, and even in, in the countries where they are banked, you don't have ready access to digital data. So the risk assessment is primarily done initially through the loan officer. So we have a whole process around how a loan officer assesses himself, whether he thinks this is a good idea or not. It then comes into the branch where there is a, a, a risk committee, and they, again, together with the loan officer, look at each of these loans. So it's a very people-intensive and time-intensive process. Um, but, you know, lending cash in Africa and getting it back and making money off it is, is just hard. So you have to invest a certain amount of time in these channels then once you get repeat customers, then the process becomes easier. So filling up your loan again once you've had it, well, you, know, you can click a button, you know, add a couple of things, and you can fill up your loan again. So the second time, the third time, it becomes easier. But the first time is people intensive. Thank you. Hi. Hi. I'd like to understand the regulatory framework you're operating under on the deposit taking side in each of the countries you're operating in. It's basically microfinance. As a microfinance bank, we are allowed to take deposits, not in every single country. So in some countries, you cannot. It's, it varies again. There's no standard regulation across Africa. So we take deposits uh, in Madagascar. We take deposits in Senegal. Um, we think in Ivory Coast as well, but we don't do in every country. In China, for instance, you cannot, for sure. Um, so it varies by country, but where we can, we always try and, and take deposits. Um, just brings down the cost of, of lending. And in the countries where you can't gather deposits, what is your funding strategy for the book in those countries? Well, initially it's, it's corporate funding that comes from the outside, so private equity, but we also uh, try and do local funding. We've just launched a, a first bond in, in Senegal to increase the, the level of local funding there. So one always tries to do uh, local funding and, and avoid your FX risk. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Um, so the example you gave of the, the person who sells uh, second-hand shoes, yeah. 
all his transactions would basically be in cash yes. with his different counterparts. How do you try to get him to bank that cash? And as a follow-up question, um, on your book, uh, and, and your lending book in particular, how is your non-performing book or proportion of your book um, looking? <laughs> we get them to bank digitally because we force them to bank digitally because the only way to pay back their loan is to pay the cash into their account. So even though they may digitally not interact yet, except with their fingerprint when they go to an, to an agent, they are essentially um, getting money out of their account and they are paying money back into their account. So they are interacting this way and as we add more features to it, um, you know, that they can pay bills or do transfers into other countries, they'll start coming across some needs that they see that could be met with an account and then actually start interacting with it a little bit more. So the first uh, sort of mobile app that we're going to go f produce for consumers at the end of this year is not going to be an interaction app or something that they can do anything with, but they can look at it so they can see, has my money come in? Has this transfer taken place? Am I eligible for another loan? So more of an information type of app um, to slowly bring the people towards the point where they then interact uh, and transact. Um, yeah, what's the, uh, the loan book look like? Well, it's, um, it's not bad. <laughs> we're, we're doing okay. It varies, again, it varies a little bit by country. Um, maturity of markets uh, changes it a bit. But I guess, um, you know, if one, one stays at a portfolio of risk of 2 to 3% is kind of what our goal is. How do you find your agents, and can you talk through some of the economics of your agent network, uh, that's the first question. And the second question, in three years' time, where, where do you anticipate the business being? And, and just give me a, a bit of a view of that. So finding agents is, is essentially done by the, by the branches. So, so we locate branches in, in, in certain dense areas that, that we believe they, they should be in, and then we start spreading our agent network around the branches. So, so that we can have a branch that could have 30, 40 agents um, supporting it around that, and we have the, the agent managers sitting in the bank branch. And uh, so they are the people who actually go out and you know, recruit either um, an agent who is already an agent of Wari or one of the other services. Uh, they're fairly easy to find, so fairly easy to sign up. Um, the ones where we try and do a big branded agent, like I showed you there, are, are a little bit more um, intense, um, sometimes combined with us actually um, loaning money to the new agent uh, to set him up, to, to cover his initial setup costs. But it's all done essentially by the agent managers uh, that sit in the branches. And, and also the loan officers that run around all day. I mean, the loan officers go and find their clients, so they'll run across potential agents as well and say, I've got a couple of clients in this area, you know, let me go look for a potential new agent here. I mean, just the other part of your question was the economics of those <coughs> agents? So when we started the agent network up, it was a pure cost. Um, it was a cost that was, you know, as, as all agent banking does, is you, you, you think it's going to reduce the cost of your branches significantly. It does to a certain point, um, but to get also agents to accept a new brand, a, a new type of working, uh, you have to give them a financial incentive. So we basically sucked up the cost uh, for a while. We've now changed just, in fact, uh, in, in the last two quarters, in, in, through the various countries, changed the models to make them cost neutral to us. Um, and that's kind of the best thing that we're, that we're hoping for at the moment. So cost neutral as it stands with transactions and then maybe make some income once you sell some other value added services through them in the future. And then I was wondering about um, the way that people are interacting with your banking product, which is sort of um, not the primary reason they've come to you. What do you find? Are, are customers using it or what proportion of customers are actually using it as a banking product? And what's your vision for that? Um, are you hoping that they will um, ultimately become uh, banking products primarily um, and build up a brand around that? We do. It's, it's, part, it's part of regulation. So in, in Madagascar, we are part of the local banking system. We issue checks. Uh, you know, it's uh, one of those terrible things you still have to do. Um, but you know, that's what's wanted there. So we actually issue checks and do all the good things around that. So I, I guess the, the people that save with us interact with our banking product probably the most because they're using it as a saving product. 
Um, but the goal is for us to, to have this as a fully transactional bank account, ultimately at some point with mobile banking capabilities. But it's something when, you know, f fraud is very rife and it's one of the big things every organization that, that is in Africa has to really spend a lot of time on with audits and that. So you've got to move slowly in these areas to make sure, um, you know, internally your organization is, is solid. Thank you very much.